वेलकम टू कोड विथ विनय इट इज़ अ कॉमन मिसकनसेप्शन अमंग स्टूडेंट्स दैट प्राइवेट डेटा मेम्बर्स कैन नॉट बी एक्सेस फ्रॉम आउटसाइड द क्लास विदाउट यूजिंग एक्सेसर और गेटर मेथड्स इन दिस वीडियो आई शो यू हाउ वन कैन एक्सेस प्राइवेट डेटा मेम्बर्स फ्रॉम आउटसाइड द क्लास विदाउट यूजिंग मेम्बर मेथड्स ऑफ द क्लास आई एल ऑल्सो शो यू हाउ वन कैन मॉडिफाई द प्राइवेट डेटा मेम्बर्स फ्रॉम आउटसाइड द क्लास so the private modifier specifies that the members can only be accessed in its own class the idea is to ensure that errors from misuse cannot happen we need to understand that the private access modifier prevents the accidental misuse of fields however if we wish to access them we can do so by using something known as a reflection api Reflection API enables Java code to discover information as well as to operate on the fields, methods and constructors of the loaded classes. Let us understand this with the help of an example. On your screen you can see there is a class by the name of A. Inside the class I have a private data member by the name of N. We also have a constructor to initialize the private data member to the value 10. and then we have a public to string method which will display the current value of n whenever we try to print the object for example let us say that i want to create an object of the class a so i'll say a o b j is equal to new a and then if i try to print the object and we run the program right after this so if you can notice the value of n is equal to 10 and n is a private data member it is not possible to access this private data member from outside the class that is if i try to say obj.n the program is not going to compile and we get an error the field a.n is not visible so this is the normal behavior a private data member in this case n declared inside the class a is not available outside the class in another class in our case it is not available inside this class that is private data members and the objective of this video is that how we can access this value of n from this class that is our main method and we'll also see how we can modify this value all without modifying anything within the class so let's begin so first we need to remove this line because this is obviously not possible now we need to use reflection classes so we'll say import java dot lang dot reflect dot asterisk this will allow us to use the reflection api inside our program now there are certain checked exceptions which might be thrown if things are not done correctly and since the focus of this video is how to access and modify the private data members we'll avoid exception handling by just declaring that we are aware that certain exceptions might be thrown and for that we'll say throws exception so we are declaring to the computer that or rather to the jvm that if there are any exceptions we are not going to handle it the next step is that we need to have a reference to this object loaded into the memory so we'll say obj dot get class once we have the reference we need to get the declared field that is our private data member n so we'll say n and we'll use the reflection class field to point to this so we'll say field f is equal to object dot get class dot get declared field n and this is going to this is basically will get you a handle to this field n inside the memory now since this field f is private by default it is not allowed to access and so we'll say f dot set accessible and we'll say true instead of false now this will allow us to manipulate or modify or access the values using the field f let us see how now the field object f is pointing to our field and we need to get the integers or rather read the integers so we'll say f dot get int instead of args we'll provide the object name that is obj and this will allow us to read this integer n so what we'll do now is we'll say system dot out dot print ln 
and we'll simply print this value so this is how you access the private data members note we haven't modified anything inside our class a and now when we'll run this program computer is going to print the value of n that is 10 that is we are now being able to access the private data member note we are accessing it we are yet not modifying it so if i run this program now see the value 10 is printed which proves that we are able to access the private data member n now the next step is how we can modify this and that is also quite simple we just have to use another method of the field object so that is f so we'll say f dot and we'll use the set method and we'll say that okay we want to modify the object and we want the value to be let's say instead of 10 we say 500 and now if i run the program again that value is going to modify but since we want to see it we'll again copy and we'll paste it over here the print line and if i run the program again see the initial value was 10 which we read then we modified it to 500 and then we are finally able to display it again so this is how you can access as well as modify a private data member of a class so now we have seen how you can access private data members as well as modify them the question is why are these methods being provided to you why is java allowing you to modify a data member or access a data member which is declared as private which is a slightly counterintuitive first they are making a rule and then they are allowing you to circumvent that rule so just think over it and use the comment box below to let me know your opinion thank you your feedback is valuable to me i want to make sure that my videos are clear and helpful if you have any questions or suggestions for improvement, please don't hesitate to leave a comment or send me a message.